I'd like to talk about the angelic watchers today. Now, there's a lot of different writings about the watchers, and we're going to be talking about the watchers in a kind of specific way today. So, this doesn't negate other teachings in regards to the watchers, it's just a different way of looking at things. So, we would say that there are two different sets of watchers there's the watchers of the world. And then there's the watchers of the universe. The way it was taught to me is that in order to help human beings, teaching angels were created. And then to help the teaching angels, the watchers of the world were created. And then to help the watchers of the world, the watchers of the universe were created. So it's like if you think about the the flow on the tree of life, it's like one cup overflowing onto the next, overflowing onto the next. I think of it that way rather than as a hierarchy of rules. It's more a, a flow of power. And so the if you if you think about the watchers of the universe as being as much above our own teaching angels, the planetary angels, as the, the throne angels are above humanity. A lot of times what happens is people don't want to use the, the power selfishly, which is altruistic, it's wonderful, but they get the wrong idea. They think that they're supposed to, to use the power to help everybody. And that's really not what it's there for. It's there to help you. So, but on the other extreme, if you think about like a Hitler or or a somebody that's some world leader that's that's really evil that seems to be using uh, occult power against the world, notice how they can never ultimately succeed. They 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 can make things really bad, and they can really rise up, and they can make things so bad, but they can never ultimately succeed because in order to get the power that they've gotten to do what what they've done, usually they have some sort of occultism that they're working with on their side, some sort of magical power that they're working with. But the power that raised them up as they are using it for the wrong purposes, then those angelic forces retreat from them, and then things end up collapsing. And so it's um, sometimes in the midst of major upheavals, political upheavals and social upheavals, it can seem like there is no angelic intervention. But there is. There is. It's just sometimes it doesn't happen in the the time frame that we think it should. But everything ends up working out the way it's supposed to. And that's because of the, the watchers. So there's this juxtaposition that the watchers have between free will and intervention. And that's there's always that balance that's being maintained. But the same goes for us on a microcosm. So that's like a, like a Hitler or something like that, and eventually collapsing and falling because they're um, not, not using the power right. But the same thing can happen to us too. Helping, quote, other people is not always helping. It's interfering. It's meddling. Sometimes we we take our magic and we think, okay, I'm going to help this person with this and this person with that, and I'm going to heal this disease for that person and do this and do that. I get that all the time. Very kind-hearted people. Okay, now how do I use this to make sure that she is safe in this you know relationship, and how can I use this spell on behalf of this other person that doesn't know how to whatever? And my response you know, as always, I try to be real gentle because I don't want people to feel bad about themselves, but either have them learn how to do it on their own or don't do it. Don't, don't inter- interfere, especially don't interfere if they don't know. But even if they ask you, why can't they learn how to do it themselves? You know, what, what, what is, what's standing in the way of them learning how to do these things themselves? Why do you have to be the one to come in and fix them? right? Because so much of that, too much of that, that quote, helping, you also get the, the, the power withdrawn from you, at least temporarily, because you're, you're actually misusing it, even though you're coming from a good intention. Because nobody can move through their life solely on behalf of the work of other people. 
right? People have to learn their lessons. People have to learn what they're here for. They have to learn who they are as a soul, their life's path, all of that stuff. They have to learn everything. And if you're always interfering and intervening to, quote, help them, it may come from a good intention, but you're not being helpful. You're providing interference. Again, it's not that you can't ever help anybody. It's just that can't be your main thrust for magic. That mostly is for you. It's mostly for you. A lot of what we talk about sometimes in astrology is transit-oriented astrology. And I've, I've come out a lot recently about how I don't really watch transits too much. I don't put too much attention on transits. And it's not that I don't believe that transiting planets affect people. Of course I do. But I find that it works much better for me, rather than trying to micromanage the transits, to just work on my magic and allow things to allow myself to be guided and led um, and, and I find that that works out much better for me. Now, in regards to transits, though, uh, when you think in terms of the, the what they used to call the malefic planets, those are usually Saturn, Mars, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets, when they aspect uh, people negatively, they often cause problems, like upheavals with Uranus and hard times and poverty even sometimes and restriction with Saturn and accidents with Mars and illusion and delusion with Neptune, you know, getting getting sucked into cults or getting sucked into narcissists' paths. That's Neptune. So it's not that those transits don't have effects. They have very important effects on people. And those are oftentimes the lessons that people need to learn. Now, what you have to understand is that with every planet, not just the malefics, every planet has another side to them. So Saturn, yeah, Saturn can, can bring you hard times, can bring you restriction, can bring you poverty even. But Saturn also rules hard work and gardening and older people and stick to and dependability. Uranus is famous for bringing divorces and upheavals and separation and sudden catastrophes. But also, open your mind to wider horizons, seeing the higher side of life, to work with the angelic realms rather than the physical realms, to learn magic, to learn occultism. Mars is oftentimes, you know, blamed for accidents and wars and injuries and things like that. But also, Mars is energy and industriousness, and vitality, and enthusiasm, and can bring healing, actually. Somebody, I was doing a Mars talisman the other day to, to Samael, and my, as always, my first goal in the talisman is peace, because that's just my path. My first goal in everything is peace, and that's what I've learned from the angels, and Samael's one of my teaching angels, one of my birth angels, and they commented, it's just like, what are you doing with uh, peace for Mars? That's wrong. And I said, no, it's not. No, it's not. Samael wants peace, but comes about it from a different perspective. And Neptune oftentimes gets a bad rap because Neptune, like I said, brings so much delusion and to be sucked into falseness, obsessions, and things like that. Neptune brings this side of life where, where we have commitment and dedication to our spiritual self, mystical understandings, being able to be more psychic and be more clairvoyant, and to actually see things from a spiritual point of view. So it doesn't have to always be the negative. And the same thing goes with these so-called positive planets. You know, they, they all have their negative aspects as well. But so you understand that when we're working planetary angelic magic, our goal is to optimize those planetary energies so that we are working with them on a higher plane. The goal is that we're not subject to those negative occurrences during planetary transits, that we're always capable of transmuting and transmuting and transmuting. That's the whole idea of working this kind of magic. All the angels want that for us, is the way it was taught to me. The angels want us to ask them for help because they can't come uninvited, but they want us to ask for help to transmute those areas that they rule. So Samael's going to transmute those areas of Mars. Uriel's going to transmute those areas of Uranus etc. I put on the YouTube channel a 
talisman of transmutation through, and that transmutation, we, di- we dissect the, the symbol of Mercury and we reassemble it in a certain way in order to bring about transmutation. Because remember, Mercury is the messenger of all, the, all of the angels to, to get in there and transform things that we may not understand where the planetary uh, origins of those things are. So as you work this magic that I teach you, that one of the main goals of working it is to overcome our weaknesses, planetarily speaking, and really fortify the strengths of our charts, really fortify those strengths so that we can start to live on a different level. We can truly be in the world, but not of it. Now, a lot of people hear that and they think, oh, that sounds really Christian. That is a very ancient concept. <laughs> it's not just Christian. It's a Magi concept. The Magi taught and still teach that we are to be in the world, but not of it. We are here then to be used for healing. So instead of us choosing to go, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do a spell for you and I'm going to do a spell for you. Instead of that, we are then sort of almost like batteries of consciousness to support other people as as they need that transformation. But we can't do the work for them, but we can do the work on ourselves. And a lot of what happens is it just takes a few really uh, globally, of, of enlightened magi, to be at a point where they're working this kind of work, uh, transmuting these energies within themselves, to then sort of cause a ripple effect where other people start to get it, it becomes a trend, it becomes a new, a new way of being. And so we want to start that trend within ourselves so that we can then start to see a trend within the world because we have entered into that new age, that age of Aquarius. We are well into it now. We, we have, it's not just the dawning. We are into it. We are there. And so we need to act like it. We need to act like the Magi that we are and allow ourselves to head up this movement. It's not an organized movement. It's not a religion. It's nothing that you're going to recruit people into. It's not, there's no proselytizing. It's really working on ourselves so that we can, through the aid of our teaching angels and the watchers above them, allow ourselves to be lifted up into a higher and higher expression of whatever our personal birth charts represent. And that is adds so much more to the energy of this planet, even in its most chaotic, even in its most chaotic. So remember that transmutation means making one thing into another. It's like when you you read about the old philosopher's stone idea, the idea that you can take one metal and turn it into another. And so a lot of those old alchemical metals were just an old version of an alloy, they were just discovering alloys. They were learning how to to change things, and that's what we're what, what we're asking to become. We're we're asking our angels to turn us into an alloy. We want to be transformed. We want to become the spiritual gold in those, especially in those areas where we have problems, where we always seem to be, you know, falling down or where we always seem to be at the effect of these planetary transits. Instead of just taking cover. We're asking, no, we want to be lifted up and we want to be transformed. So, like, for instance, if, if sometimes the, the angels, if, we, if you are having a bad Saturn transit, well, you might notice that the angels start to, to really give you this desire to garden, <laughs> to start gardening, or maybe taking care of some some elderly people, or doing something, getting involved in real estate, doing something that's that's one of the positive sides of Saturn. And you'll notice that as you do that, as that thing sort of starts to happen, that these negative transits start to be transformed through those activities. You know, uh, maybe if you have a lot of Mars, negative Mars transits happening, that you you may notice that as you bring those to your teaching angels, that you get those transformed. And, and some of the positive sides of Mars start to really come out in you. You become very enthusiastic, very energetic, very positive, and get a lot done, get so many tasks done in a short period of time, and that you really overcome those negative aspects through the new aspects of, of, of Mars. Mars that have been transformed through you, through those teaching angels. 
See, this isn't necessarily something you have to figure out for yourself. That's what, what a lot of people think is like, okay, well, what's the positive side of this and how do I transform it? That's not really the way it works. You bring those things to the teaching angels, you do the rituals, you do the magic, and then those higher powers lift you up. Instead of you thinking that you got to climb a ladder, they lift you up. They lift you up into that new experience and that into those new places. And that's what transformation is all about. Yes, we have to do our work, but there's a lot of that work that we can't do. And that, that heavy lifting is done for us. And that's why this kind of magic is so exciting and so beautiful. Whether or not you like angel magic, it doesn't matter. There's always another way that it can that it can present itself to you. The teaching angels and the watchers are not stupid. They can they can come to you in a way that does mean sense that makes sense to you that is meaningful to you. If it's not through this system, it can be through something else. But it will work if you are open to it and you're in you are willing to find something that works for you and stay the course and stick with it and actually work the magic. So you're never really working directly with the watchers too often, but knowing that those watchers are there, knowing that those watchers have everybody's back. They have your your angels' backs. They have the watchers below them's backs. They have everything handled. Nothing is wrong in the universe. Everything is working exactly the way it's supposed to be. And so the, the places where we're having problems, the places that we're having chaos, the places that we're having tragedy... We have every right and now every skill available to us to call upon one of our or all of our teaching angels in order to begin that process of transmutation so that we can be freed from all of that. And it may be incremental from our point of view. It may seem to take longer than we want it to take, but it is working. And as long as you keep coming back again and again and again, you will notice As you move along your life, you will notice how quickly you are transforming and how much better your life actually is, even in the midst of some of the most atrocious chaos that we are surrounded with in this world. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. Until next time, blessed be. 